Bible says there is a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. This was written to Christians. What is this salvation ready to be revealed? Like I said, Christians don't understand the subject of salvation and redemption nearly as much as they think they do. This revealing of a salvation comes about when people suddenly realize that there is something out there they must be saved from. The danger is revealed to them. If the danger is never revealed to them, they never cry out to be saved. And so this salvation yet to be revealed comes when it's finally revealed to the people that they need salvation from, from what? We're going to go to Isaiah 52, verse 1 and 2, because this is a prophecy. He does nothing unless he makes it known to the prophets. And this prophecy shows us that there was going to be an awakening. An awakening to what? An awakening to what they need to be saved from. An awakening to what they need to be redeemed from. We read Isaiah 52, 1. Awake, awake. Clothe yourself in your strength, O Zion. Clothe yourself in your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean will no more come unto you. Shake yourself from the dust. Rise up, O captive Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the chains around your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Shake yourself from the dust. Re read on. Bring it on. For thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing, and you will re be redeemed without money. We'll stop there. Well, let's read that one. For Thus says the Lord God, my people went down at the first into Egypt to reside there. Then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. All right. What have we read? We've read that there's going to be an awakening. We have read that they are going to wake up to what? Go back to Isaiah 52, 1. And we see that they awaken to uh, the un circumcised and the unclean coming unto them. If you remember in the last message, I pointed out to you that the Scripture says never to call a man unclean. A snake is unclean. Jesus called them what? Snakes. They were unclean. Why? Because they were not men. You're going to have to get it down. You just as well do it. I know it's hard for you to take. Now, they awoke, we'll go back to, to this verse, they awoke to the reality that they had in their midst the unclean and the uncircumcised. Now, the Canaanites were called in Scripture the uncircumcised. If you let the Scriptures define itself, you begin to understand why some of these that are out there in your life are a bunch of pricks in your side and in your eyes, thorns in your side and pricks in your eyes. That's what the Bible says. And you say, well, Jesus has never said anything about these things you're talking about. Oh, yes, he has. He says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. He said grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes. What was he doing? He was giving you an esoteric message, what I'm making very clear to you right now. And we are going to wake up to the reality that we've got these unclean and uncircumcised in our midst. Now, verse 2 says this. This is a wake-up call, you might say. Shake yourself from the dust, raise up, O captive Jerusalem. What do they wake up to? To the reality that they are captured. Loose yourself from the chains around your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Now, the next verse. For thus says the Lord, you were sold for nothing, and you will be redeemed without money. What does this mean? It means that they were sold into slavery 
for nothing. What do you mean for nothing? When you no longer have the constitutional money of gold and silver, you have nothing. You have nothing but debt bondage. And that's what we were sold into. And now it says they're going to be redeemed without, without money. We are waking up to the reality that we are not so free. Here's a, I can give you a lot of examples. Here is uh, news from this week, September 25th. Uh, it says Virginia Governor Tim Kaine is defending why his administration forced the sudden resignation of five Virginia State Patrol chaplains because they prayed publicly in Jesus' name. Aren't you glad you're an American where at least you know you're free? Aren't you proud of America? You can't even pray in the name of Jesus Christ! You can't even homeschool your kids! Wake up! You are captured! And they're a little bit concerned that we might be waking up. And that's why they're moving in troops in violation of the Posse Comitatus Act. A whole regiment coming, I understand, from Iraq. This says, U.S. troops returning from duty in Iraq will be carrying out homeland patrols in America from October 1st in complete violation of Posse Comitatus for the purpose of helping with civil unrest and crowd control. You see, I think, remember I told you sometime back, the Homeland Security put out the call, it says, be on the alert. Well, they are making the moves because they are anticipating that when people wake up, they might need a little crowd control. And you people need to wake up to this reality. Support our troops. Let me tell you something. They're not your troops. They're their troops. That's why they say support our troops. It's that simple. Oh, no, they're our troops. Oh, yeah, well, do they go where you tell them? Do they shoot who you tell them to shoot? Do they obey your orders? No. You see why our preachers can get in trouble on this? But I'm telling you the truth. And the truth is, they have been using Iraq for urban warfare training. So they can bring them back to control the people here. A bunch of mercenaries that are over there because of the money. And they will shoot wherever they tell are told to shoot. Now, I was talking to a man the other day, and he said, I don't think they'll ever fire on their own citizens. I want to tell you something. This is a newspaper article that I want to show up to you because this last week, a man over in Finland fired on about 10 or 11 of uh, innocent humans. And he explains why he did it. I want you to read the newspaper headlines. It says, 11 die in attack. Assailant, 22 used gun explosives at Finnish college and said he hated the human race. Now, suppose there really are those that hate the human race. Just suppose maybe the Bible's true. That they might steal, kill, and destroy. Where do you suppose they might gravitate to? They gravitate to these different positions. But I tell you something, the military is really neat because, man, they get to have their guns and they get to walk around. Hey, we got a tangle one over, uh, got a tangle target. Get him! Boom, 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 boom! What's tangle? That's just a way of dehumanizing humans. And isn't that the term? And uh, so we don't call them. we got a human being. It's a tangle target. They're planning on an awakening, and they plan to have it covered. You can't pray in the name of Jesus. By the way, why, why, don't they want, why doesn't this Cain fellow want the name Jesus used? The same reason some of those preachers, some of you listen to, even though they teach the identity, don't want to use the name Jesus. They want to use Yahshua. Because 